when I got back to the house, the house was obviously nobody was in there. So I figured they're still up here fooling around. Paul was going to be getting set up to plant. Our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died, and he was refiguring to do, to plant the sunflower seeds. Uh-huh. What else pointless information do you have? And I drove up and saw and called. I drove up, I saw, and I called. Eventually. (laughs) Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Hey, Chrissy. Hey, boo. I mean, I'm sure we had a little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, Mm -hmm. wonderful relationship. And yours and Paul's relationship? How you doing? As good as it could be. Considering all the issues that that I have and how I've been spending all the money and turning our rich family into a poor family. (laughs) You know, aside from all that, we've been great. (laughs) My eye, my my pupils are always dilated and make me look like my eyes is just straight black. But, you know, it's been a good day. Oh, look at him. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at this. And look at this guy in the back. I don't mean to, you know, deter from from the point, but what's going on with you, sir? Who are you trying to pick up? <laughs> look at this dude in the back. With his shirt out. Let me unbutton this a little bit. You know, the whole world's going to see this later. I want to you know, see what I can't catch. Catch me some ladies. <laughs> They're going to be like, ooh, who's that silver fox? You know, more like a white owl. <laughs> oh, baby. You tried it. You tried it. Mm-hmm. You tried it, boo. 22. Okay. So that was the moment right there, that line of questioning. Just asking some very general ooh, questions now about this your relationship. Bar- Said Corey Fleming, is that that dude's name? That I was with the chest out, with his, you know, showing his chest, chest, <clears throat> trying to show us his chest hair. Mm-hmm. Oh, he got disbarred. Ooh, cold blooded. <laughs> you mentioned that before, didn't you, Mr. Murdoch? Is that the moment right there? Uh, is that the look on your face when you decide to lie about an important mm-hmm. fact in your wife mm-hmm. and son's murder? Mm-hmm. I don't know, as I said, Mr. Waters, I don't know the exact point that I made that decision. You exactly earlier mentioned that very exchange as somehow triggering you to lie. Mm-hmm. Yes, about it is. The last time you saw triggering the shit out of you. No, I'm not saying that that's what made me lie. I'm saying this whole set of circumstances mm-hmm. caused me to be in a state where I had paranoid thoughts. No, them pills did that. <laughs> that normally, hey, Mr. Amanda, Waters, I could take a deep breath and make go away yes, he's in a caged bird, a singing, a second or two seconds, or three seconds at the most. And on this night, hey, Vonda, hey, boo, I wasn't able to do that. Mama, love you, Ooh. bars. But all of those things that I uh, mentioned. Oh, that's Danny Henderson with his chest out, showing his chest hairs. Yeah, I don't know nothing about these people. All I know is that this man lost an awful lot of weight <laughs> during this trial. I mean, he was like, "That's this trial wasn't, what was it, like a couple weeks? <laughs> it's a lot of weight to lose in a couple of weeks is all I'm saying. He looks very different. You know what I'm saying? He lost a lot of a weight. Mm, he's pill poppers. He's a pill popping, popping pills all the night of my, 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 my. Yeah, this guy, exactly. This guy right here. I believe contributed to that. Okay. Any more you want to add now since you keep adding them? 
Glad to answer any question you have. This I mean, dude is my type of petty. Yeah. Factors have gone from yesterday to today, and now even after lunch, we got some news. So, anything else you want to add right now hey. as to factors? Oh, look at look at look at look at look at y'all. I don't believe look, 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 look. that I, that I've added any back new there. factors. I believe that's what I said yesterday. Jersey. All right. He did shed some weight. A wife sent a wife and a son. I've oh, explained some of those factors because of your questions. Cold blooded. Okay. Y'all as cold as ice. Right, let me move this forward. Hey, Erica. Hey, boo. So, <clears throat> most of this was stuff from you know, a couple of them, but not. yesterday in great detail about the boat case which you brought up on the 911 call <laughs> hey christy christy barnes said new jack city for the love of uh, for the love of money i don't think that's new jack city I, I think you're mixing up two different things i think it's um new jack city was living just enough for the city huh? living 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 like the love of money, I think that's Bone Thugs in Harmony. <laughs> For the love of money, yeah, I think that's Bone Thugs in in Harmony. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm trying to think of a song in New Jack City that was love, love for the love of money. I love when y'all reference music, though. <laughs> I love it. Because mama's memory ain't shit. Well, my, well, my memory is fine. My short-term memory is terrible. <laughs> my long-term memory is, is solid. <laughs> Call and to Daniel Green, and then, of course, in this first interview, correct? I did, I did mention right. the boat wreck. All right, and you described that. Do you remember what you said in this interview about the boat wreck? No, specifically. About specifically the other people involved in the boat wreck? Is it? That's the remix? <laughs> oh, shit. Do you remember specifically? I guess you said no. I My remember man. talking about the boat wreck. Christy. And I know no. that I talked about the boat wreck. All right. Well, that's the remix. All right. You got me. You got me. <laughs> played now from 1714. Dang direct threats between any of the people on the my boat specifically, but I, I do think I, there's been a small amount of yip yap between a couple of them, but not recently. Okay. <laughs> she said no, OJ has sung that, that song. Small amount of yip yap. Yeah, and just to be clear, Mr. Waters, there was never ever a point in time where I thought that the people that were involved in the boat wreck mm -hmm. did this to Paul Paul and Maggie. Okay. I, I've never thought that. All right. I never thought that, but it's literally one of the first things that you said out of the 911 call. No, nah, that's not what I said. I never, ever, ever under any point in time believed that those kids that were riding in that boat or their parents or their... Yeah, that's true. He didn't say that the people who were on the boat um, did it. He said that, you know, like the people in the town who were mad because the girl died and and felt like he got away with it they were the ones who were like threatening him he didn't say it was the people on the boat <laughs> so this dude is he he definitely is um he's he's reaching this prosecutor is reaching for fun <laughs> Or, or their families. Hey, Rachel. And I didn't believe that any of the families, the people that were involved in the boat wreck, had anything to do with hurting Maggie and Paul. Okay. But I can tell you that at that time, and as I sit here today, that I believe that boat wreck is the reason why Paul, Paul, and Maggie were killed. Okay. And I'm certain. So I believe it was, that. It was random vigilantes, the 5 2 vigilantes, huh? No, what I believe, Mr. Waters, is I believe that. When Paul was charged criminally, there were so many leaks, half truths, half reports, half statements, partial information, misrepresentations of Paul that ended up in the media, 
all the time. And when I tell you the social media response that came from that was vile, the things that were said about what they would do to Papa, they were so over the top that nobody would believe anybody would get on social media and do that. But I believe then and I believe today that the wrong person, the wrong person saw and read that. Because okay. I can tell you for a fact. Was that person you, Alex? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> that the person or people who did what I saw on June oh, the 7th. thank you, Rachel. Rachel they hated y'all. <laughs> Paul Murdoch, and they had anger in their heart. And that is the only, only reason that somebody could be mad at Paul Paul like that and hate him like that. Gotcha. All right, so we've got now. We've but got that's why the, the I did then believe it was the boat wreck, mm -hmm. and I believe now that the is it weird? Is it weird that? <laughs> is it weird that he's extremely convincing? <laughs> you know. Oh no, that's right. He's on. He was on the pills. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he might not even know. He, you know, he might not even remember doing it. He might not even remember doing it. But I shit you fucking not. I, I ain't going I ain't gonna hold you. I, I I just he's convincing as fuck. Had the town not I'm gonna tell I put it to you like this. Had the son not did this thing with the boat, right? And had the other son not had his terrible reputation as well. <laughs> and this happened without those things being factors. He's pretty fucking believable. No shit. Like, I, I I could see myself as a juror being like, I don't know. I don't know. Especially, actually, even, even considering him being on those pills like he was, it almost leans more towards that this is even more convincing. Because he, he there's like this, there's like this patheticness to him at this point, right? <laughs> that is kind of like, oh my God, he's just fucked. You know what I mean? Like he's in this impossible situation. I can see it. I can see it. He's convincing as fuck, but we gotta keep, we gotta, I, I'm sure as I dabble into regular parts of the trial, oh, and even more so, check that out. I wonder if they dug a little deeper, you know, how stiff is Buster's alibi? <laughs> Cause now I could see that. I could see that. Because if if he got convicted of it, right? So so the the mom and the mom and the son get killed, right? The dad gets convicted. And like I said before, the insurance company ain't gonna pay out him if he is under investigation for it, right? But, hey, Tian, <laughs> we just we just playing around here, right? We just theorizing a little bit. But if they, it, like, if he got convicted, though, of it, the son could possibly still collect from that insurance policy from them two. So if Buster said it, not Buster did it, he didn't even have to physically do it. If, if Buster planned it, just theorizing here, okay? <laughs> if Buster had planned it, had some people do it for him, you know, promise them some money, some, a lot of, you know, I'm sure it's a nice amount of money, right? Promise them some money for them to do it, knowing that he's going to get blamed for it because who's going to believe him? He's on all these pills perfect pan, uh, patsy and it makes sure that he doesn't he's not going to get the money the money there's nobody left but buster 
right? No, he wouldn't be able to collect, but Buster might. Because the policy still exists and somebody's supposed to get it. It can't be him because he suspected Alex, but Buster is not. In fact, if even more so because Buster, um, because he's like been convicted. So it can't, they can't even point a finger at Buster for this at this point. They already got their person. It's good, right? You you follow it? You follow me? Because, I mean, I do notice this. Buster shows absolutely no expression on his face at all. during Like, like literally nothing. And he just kind of has that look about him. <laughs> you know, he's got that giant face. You know what I'm saying? And look how pathetic this guy looks. Like, I feel like his son did it. It's my theory. Like, I, it's, just, it's just how I feel myself. But that's, you know, my crazy thought. But it, I mean, it sounds easy enough to me. And, they, and, and he would have known everybody's going to definitely just follow along. They're not going to look for nobody else because they're going to be very happy to blame this guy for it because everybody hates him already anyway. The whole town hates him. They want him to go down and all of that. And... The other, the best there already has it in his history. I mean, we already, there's already a theory about him often somebody before. That boyfriend, apparently, that he had, allegedly. <laughs> the little gay boy that got killed that they never solved. And it's in there's a trail to Buster. So, yeah. I, I'm thinking. Buster's a sneaky little thing, right? I know it started out crazy, but you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I could find a way. Yes, I'm a cop now. You know this. Oh, hey, solving crimes. <laughs> Crime stopper. Solving crimes without leaving the house. Crime stopper. <laughs> I never know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know that's right. Call me Scooby Doo, honey. Boat wreck. All right, so we got something to do with it. All right, so we've got <laughs> random vigilantes because of the boat wreck. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know that they're random vigilantes. Well, you just said it wasn't the family or the kid, or no. the kids or the family. Yeah, of the, the other whole kids family boat, need to be right? thrown out. So what? you're saying it's somebody off of social Buster media, next. and you don't have any evidence of that, do you? Not you just me. believe that, and you're just telling that jury that as you try to explain the lie that you told for the first time yesterday. Isn't that right? No, sir, that's not right. It's not right. How? All right. Well, let me ask you a question okay, then. So what you're telling this jury prison. is that it's a random vigilante. That's your twelve-year-old, uh, the twelve-year-old, five-two people that just happened to know that Paul and Maggie were both at Moselle on June 7th, that knew that they would be at the kennels alone on June the 7th, that knew that you would not be there, but only between the times of 8.49 and 9.02, that they show up without a weapon, assuming that they're going to find weapons and ammunition there, that they commit this crime during that short time window, and then they travel the same exact route that you do around the same time to Almeida. That's what you're trying to, to tell this jury? You got a lot of factors in there, Mr. Waters, all of which I do not agree with, but some of which I do. <laughs> all right. Hey, Debbie. Debbie Caruso. Come on, get him. Get him. <laughs> you testified oh, earlier oh, that after this yeah, happened. Well, let me back up just real quick. When you were driving to and from <laughs> Josh, Almeida, why were you, you in such a hurry? You crazy. Why are you, why are you rolling 70, 80 miles an hour down that dark, beat up road? I wasn't in such a hurry. You weren't? 
No, sir.